Nick Meany, the fullback. Gee, he's been super impressive in every opportunity he's had. It's kickoff here, and you're right, Al Tung. They've gone for the short one. And Super Lawler it is that's come down with it again. We've seen that last week. He's got a crystal ball already, Alan Tung. Knights are going to really chance their arm at the back end of this season. Now Stone has the football, 12 metres out. Great opportunity, starting the game for the Knights to go straight on the attack. Starling, creative out of dummy out. Back to Cogger, on to Meany. And now gets to the far side of Henry Penn with the football. Knights have got plenty of strength in their centres and the battle of the Titans Knight up against the Knights in the centres alone will be a highlight. Now Zach Hosking with the football. Plays it nine metres out. Knights are spread out to the open side on the left. Butterfield plays it back. And the Knights have quick moved it quickly to Meany who is a strike weapon for them. Fifth tackle now. The Knights will be looking for a repeat set of six. In better than that, Al, they get a penalty. Yeah, well, we've gone a short kick off for a shift for a shift. The Knights have come to play some football and now Big Kurt Bernard just trying to hold that momentum down with the Newcastle Knights. Quick tap taping in here now. Knights, are wanna, they want to play some up-tempo. Loves the try line, Big Butterfield. Come off the bench last week. Todd Lowry said he was his best front row and he started him today. Starling now gets the ball away. Robson turns it back up to Cogger. Meany quickly onto Penn. Penn to the outside. Good defence there by the Gold Coast Titans and wrapped him up there in John Olive using that NRL experience. Hoskins is resetting it for the Knights. They're spread out to the left hand side. A wobbly old play the ball. Cogger now gets it on to the 5 8 and Newman and Newman just trying to get some go forward here for the Knights, trying to set up on both sides of the ruck through Butterfield. He wants the ball again, Newman. Now he's got it. Quickly onto Stone and the contact you could hear there. Very good from the 5'8 in Rogers. It's again a bit of ill discipline. They're saying that there was a lifting tackle. It bewildered some of the Titans, but referee Phil Henderson says that that was a dangerous tackle and more pressure for the Titans. Yeah, it didn't look like there was too much in it, but in that dangerous position as you spoke about and, and another set of six for the Gold Coast Titans. Once again the penalty this time breaking the ball out the, the Titans That's haven't spent the footy at all there two and a half minutes in you would think when you're receiving from a kickoff you get some early possession but you not for the Titans today and the Knights continue to put the pressure on Butterfield still pumping the legs and he plays it a metre out, just next to the uprights. Good set-up play for the Knights. Back behind the ruck. Chance here at the line. It could be the lock forward, I think, in Robson. Geez, dangerous near the line. The Titans did a good job to drag him down, but they're a bit stripped to the right-hand side. Knights just got a little out of sync then with Henry Penn getting in front of Meany, so they'll have to concede to the tackle. Reset to the centre field. Now Amy with the football. Let him out today. Between himself and Cogger, they lead this team around the park. Here's Starling, flat pass to Butterfield. The nephew of the great Tony Butterfield. Staying on his feet, they did a good job to slow it down there, though, the Titans. Fifth tackle. Cogger goes to the line, grubbers it in behind. Fantastic play there by AJ Brimson. Good in attack and particularly good in defence on this occasion. Yeah, his positional play was fantastic. He didn't want to put his side under any more pressure there, and now they get a relieving penalty. The Titans will... They've had four sets of six on their try line. They're tackling and tackling, and finally they get the football. Great positional play, as I spoke about with AJ Brimson. He juggled the football, but he just held on to it at the back end, and now much-needed penalty coming out. But you can see just that breeze there kicking for the touch line from the Gold Coast Titans. And out in the possession that they're facing against at the moment. Plus a stiff breeze. Tough little start. Beautiful sunshine here in Newcastle, but a real bite to the breeze. And as you said, it's going to be a factor aiding the Knights in the first half. And in the first half of the Titans, it'll be a bit of a battle. Now here's Big Bernard. There's plenty of rump steak out there. With the other football out to Josh Rogers, turning it back inside. Titans going down the middle of the field there. And Fata Fahey with the ball. He's 38 metres in. Now they move to the left hand side. This combination between the Rogers and Brimston. Look how quick he is still going. Flicks it back inside and the try scorer. Triple last week. First to score today is the halfback in Josh Ralph. Well, how quickly it can turn around. 
the Newcastle Knights had all the possession down the other end of the field and couldn't crack this defensive steal of the Gold Coast Titans. A half opportunity, Brimson, he had plenty of work to do. He bounces out of Henry Penny, made a couple errors there last week defensively. And back on the inside, Josh Ralph. We spoke about in, his, in the pregame about how important he is as a player to watch and in particular his support play and how well he is doing in that area of his game. He always finds himself in and around the football. He gives himself the best opportunity to get his hands on the footy. And what an opening play here from the Gold Coast Titans. Their real first real set of six was pretty much straight through the middle until AJ Brimson injects himself in the back line. Josh Ralph, great support play back up the middle. That's the opening point. Gee, Al, you've given that crystal ball a really good scrub. You've put him down as your player to watch, and you said AJ Brimson's the danger. And it was the halfback, and Josh Ralph puts it down. He's been a try scoring machine. He even had the windscreen wipers going after he put it down. We'll have to get you to give us an update on what that post try celebration is there. The extra two points is added as well. So it is the Titans. They're under enormous pressure for the first five minutes with the Knights putting all the heat on. How quickly, as you say, how quickly it changes. And that's a real big blow to the Knights. Yeah, it is. And, and I'll be interested to see again, do they go with a short kickoff or what's their mentality? I know they want to throw the football around. I think it's getting set up here like they are going to go short, and they do again. Why not? They've gone to the well and it's brought dividends before. This time the Titans are well and truly onto it. And Mika, Christian, flies high and comes up with the football. Not such height as well, not only Sopa Lawler, but Corey Dennis. Big, tall, lanky player for the Knights. Titans now, just got to back into the grooves. Back over the halfway line. That's the problem with the short kickoff. It gives the opposition opportunity to get into your half. Now Rogers dancing around. Some spiders on them at the moment, a couple of the Titans players, Brimson and Rogers. Knights need to improve their first contact. Pass was forward. Yep, the touch judge did a wonderful job to see that there. It was just that temptation to hit flat at the line from Bernard. A couple of errors early, starting, normally coming off the bench. Again, not completing there, the set boys. of back six in, after guys, points. Yeah, and just overrunning the mark there. You can see in the touches, they got it right. He ran straight over the top of young Tommy Starling. Kurt Bernard, he's done a wonderful job coming off the bench. He's, he's 120 odd kilos. He played in the junior keyways this year. He's provided plenty of impact off the bench. He probably hasn't played as many minutes, I think, as what Coach Ben Wolf would like, but a big start needed to bring him into the starting side. But they've been basically defending the whole first six or seven minutes of this game. So you haven't got to see too much of him with the ball in hand, big Kurt Burn. Tell you what, he's from the Altona Roosters, a little club down there in Victoria in Melbourne. Also got Tanoa Brown coming off the bench. They can produce some football as the Altona Roosters. They'll be listening in down there this morning. Now the Knights just trying to reset it through Sam Stone. Step back into some heavy traffic from Titans defence. Starling now, he's the creative one for them. Back to Cogger, straightening the attack. And he gets an offload. Here's Meany off the back of that offload, looking for space on the left-hand side. Their second phase foot is good tonight. When they can get a little bit of momentum with that, they make a difference. Butterfield screaming for the foot. He wants to go forward. Now he gets it. Quickly moves it to Cogger. Good play here by Starling, who readjusted to the outside because he's seen some space. Hooker playing in the far right-hand corridor. Fifth tackle now. The Knights down the short side through Cogger. Decides to run and see some space. Kicks it back inside. It ricochets. AJ Brimson eventually got onto the footy. Opportunity there for Kanoa Gudgeon. That they run the footy, chanting their hand again. Nearly paid off for them. Yeah, once again, they're just they're looking to play some football, but giving away a penalty. They did this last time, and Ralph and Brimson, they, they cut them to pieces down the other end of the field after a penalty. Defensively, they need to be much better. But once again, they're trying to play some footy. Last play, running it there. The football was bouncing around like a pinball. But once again, Brimson in great field position to get that footy. We might have to get you to slip down at half time and replace the whistle. Very busy early, the referee wanting to lay down the discipline. Here's Bernard with the footy. Also through Glenora as a junior. So Glenora to the Altona Roosters. There's a heap of him. Over the halfway line now, the Titans. Oh, it's keen in, def in defence. Butterfield chasing out of marker to put some pressure on. Now they come to the right hand side. Move quickly on the Fadafahi. Strong also with footy in hand. They go back to the open side. Big Max King with the footy. 
grandson of the great Johnny King. Australia's great try scorers. Goes right to the line. The Titans tried to thread the needle to the outside. I think he might have skewed a little off the side of his boot there, Rogers. And in the end, it was very dangerous. Trickled into touch. Yeah, well, it was a right play, actually. He took the football right to the line. It's a tough kick when you, you're charging at the line that hard and then trying to get a soft kick on the back end of it. It's a it's a hard kick to execute. But if he had got it right, Christian Mika, he was right on the money there too. So Josh Rogers and, and Josh Ralph, the two halves, are really troubling the nice defensive line early. Corey Dennis with his first touch of the afternoon brings in that NRL experience, oh, very yeah, good yeah, last yeah, week. Side, wait. The battle of the centres will be a beauty today. The other night's just trying to reset in Move the middle eight. of the ground. Skipper Amy plays at 35 metres out. Starling, whenever there's one marker, he's out of there and putting pressure on. Titans defence knew it. Jumped out quickly to shut down any opportunities. Over turning the ball back inside to Henry Penn. Interesting to see if Henry Penn's done some contact work this week. Last week he was in good position defensively, but he just came up with a few errors with his first contact, and they were able to get a few tries down that side. Starling now plays it on the fifth tackle with another dart. Plenty of time for Newman, despite some kick pressure. Puts it up in the bright sunshine and tests his arm. Brimson's come up with an error, and Newman's got the ball back. And here's another opportunity for the Knights. There's space on the left-hand side. The Titans are strung out. They've got to move it quickly. Good vision by Meany. Gets it to Corey Dennis, who just needed a catch and pass. In the end, he does the job and barges his way over. And the Knights strike back through Corey Dennis. Well, he just holds that football out in his left-hand arm there. You thought he might have even got the offload away at the back end. But too much strength at the end to get it across. Well, they've had so much possession and football down this end of the field. They needed to get some points on the back of it. This was the error from AJ Brimson. You see the referee, he restarted the tackle count. Meany knew straight away that the space was on that left-hand edge. And Corey Dennis was the man. Sopalola was on his outside. He didn't need to use him at the back end. Great work from Meany, the fullback, to get his eyes up and see the space on the outside. Great strength by Dennis and a great hit back from the Newcastle Knights. No doubt about it. And you can imagine how much Matty Sopalula was screaming at him. He loves the try line himself. Corey Dennis, he backed himself. He's been a revelation this year with his rugby league. He comes from Lakes United, the mighty Lakes United here on, in Newcastle. I don't imagine he thought he'd be playing six NRL games. And in his first game in the NRL, come up with a double and has continued to have good form despite a little bit of injury. He's the prototype. Big, long, strong, lanky type player. And he's delivered on a number of occasions to Sopalola on his outside. That big left-hand offload, he is really hard to tackle. Sopalola scored 14 tries so far this season. Oh, I dare say that Corey Dennis would have provided about 10 of those try assists to him as well. So not only can he score them, he can set his outside men up as well. Braden Robson has the ball placed. He's going to have to start it in the field of play and use this breeze to bring it from right to left. Did none of that. Unfortunately started it to the left and it stayed there. So it'll remain Titans six over the Knights four. Both of these sides have got that in them. If you give them an opportunity, they generally are good enough to make you pay. Yeah, and, and just on that occasion, AJ Brimson, he fumbled the football and they just couldn't get back defensively their line in time to do that. If you look at some of the stats, tackled in the opposition, 20 Newcastle Knights have had 15 to the Gold Coast. They've only had the one opportunity and they lead on the scoreboard. So... Uh, they've had plenty of time down that end of the field, and that's a credit to the, the Titans' defence as well, especially early on. They had plenty thrown at them. Uh, they held strong, but they just couldn't on that occasion. Once again, you can see the Knights last week, they shifted the ball from the kickoff, two and three sets of hands. They've done it again here in their first opportunity with a kick restart from the kickoff. Here's Butterfield meeting them at the advantage line. Good battle up front, too. King and Watts against Butterfield and Amy and Stone playing on that left hand edge on that lead line for them and gives them opportunities to play at the back or at the line Here's Amy resetting forward once again met in good defence could have promoted the footy but the tackle from Roberts was strong enough here's Starling at a dummy I've seen some opportunities he's had an air swing though 
think it might have been Rogers jumped out and put some pressure on. Just maybe overplaying the hand a little bit there, Tommy. Yeah, and this is the mentality when you you come to throw the football around uh, that you can get caught up in this and a couple of errors. You don't usually play that set structure. He's been fantastic. I thought he was the best last week. This time comes out a bit of an air swing there. Nearly high extended his poor old knee. <laughs> He's, he swung at it that hard. Uh, bit like my golf swing, that was. Oh, I can't imagine. I'm sure you're silky like everything else you did, Al. Look at the Titans shifting the ball quickly from left to right. Right to left, I should say, to that left hand edge. Next defence, they were good. In fact, they were that good, they've turned the football over. And we've spoken about this battle going on on that far side there with Henry Penn and also John Olive. They've gone to that side on a number of occasions, the Newcastle Knights. And this time, the Titans, they come up some good contact. Kanoa Gudgeon in there, Fred Keel as well. So that far side of the field, there's, there's been plenty of attack and defence run through that edge. I think he might have been a little lucky there, Kanoa Gudgeon. I think he had a fair go at that football. And you could see that Fred Keel, he was quite polite when he got up to the referee, but I think he thought, geez, I've been a bit Hard done by here. Play on, play on. Yours, mate. Now the Knights once again happy to just push the footy around a little bit from the scrum. This time it's Henry Penn, the right-hand centre. Coming to the left-hand side and going back centre field. They're trying to get some ball over to the other centre in Corey Dennis. And he now gets the football. And the try scorer for the Knights gets up. Bit of a push there too, so some feeling already. It's nice to see some energy put into it. Once again, we're seeing some pushing and shoving as the playing the football. Starling at the back to Cogger. Cogger, I think he, he lost the football too, so a little bit of ill discipline from both teams. Just looking as Jack Cogger's straightening up the attack there, I think if he can look to have Meany back on that inside, there may be some space because he commands respect with the football. Yeah, he's throwing plenty at the Titans defensive line there. You can just see as that football yep. just comes free and just, again, just not just securing wait. at the back end. It's something that they're going to need to, to really get a handle of at the moment. Too many errors and, and the Gold Coast Titans, they're not going to go away. They've got a plenty of strike right across the park and you give them too much football, they'll make you pay. Yeah, here's the double last week to Sammy once again. Just hands on the football. They're trying to slow it down. The, the penalties already, it, it's three apiece but it feels like it's been 10 penalties already. Yeah, well, only 17 minutes into the game, so there have been a number of penalties and, and a few errors now from both sides as well, so it, it's got a little bit scrappy. I'm sure the Titans want to do something about that, and the chief playmaker, Rogers has the football. Out the back to Ralph, and he throws a speculator. It's been play on. I thought that might have gone forward. John Olive gets the ball on the outside to Fred Keel, and Fred Keel goes to the try line. He's come up with a try. Referee signalling six to go. Points to the spot. Fortuitous opportunity there, or a fortuitous bounce. Thought the pass was questionable. Referee said play on. Yeah, we'll need to have a look at this. As they go across field here, you can see the ball comes out the back there from Josh Ralph. It goes backward. How often do you see it when the ball hits the deck, the defensive line just all stop, everybody holds, but not the Gold Coast Titans. They swooped on it as quick as they could, John Olive. And he picks the football up and Fred Keel on his outside. He had plenty of work to do. Showed a slick pair of heels to race away from Nick Meany. He's got a set of wheels on him himself. He drags him down right at the back end. Tommy Starling in there as well, trying to stop the try. Well, I think that's OK. I do think you? the pass. Yeah. Who did you pick today? I picked the Titans, <laughs> but <laughs> the points are on the board. The referee said play on. Certainly what the Gold Coast Titan did, and Fred Keel, two yeah. tries this season. You're right, he certainly showed some good speed because Nick Meaney's got some real pace, and great to see Tommy Starling. We talk about it so much, honest. It was easy to drop off there, almost got there and saved the try. Couldn't do it. Fred Keel comes up with the points, and now Josh Rogers, who's already kicked his first. This one much more difficult from out in the sideline. He's got good purchase on us up in the air. You can see the strength of that breeze. Held it up. Extra two points won't be added. Titans 10, Knights 4. That breeze is getting stronger down there. Yeah, you could just see that because he's a fantastic kicker of the football there and just holding up in the win. And, and with that in the back of their mind and, and Coach Ben run. Wolf thinking of that Onside. too, if they can hold on to this lead or if they can go into the break, they know that they will have that advantage coming home in the second half. 
Are we going to see a short kick off again, Al? Oh, the way he's stepping back like that, only two or three steps, it suggests that they will. Here Absolutely, I think they will. And he's hit it well, too. It's just going to get over the tent. Oh, we might not have made it. will be a penalty on the halfway line. Only centimetres in it. Gee, that was close. And I'm not sure about that. I know it worked for them last week, so you don't want to go away from that. And they got that confidence out of that big win over the Panthers. But you've got a big breeze at your back. Why not utilise it? Um, and drive the ball down deep into that other end of the field. And we know that they're a big pack. Kurt Bernard into the starting side as well. Make them do the hard stuff out of their own end of the field. Just remember, that ball only has to go over the line of the 10-metre line, it, uh, or the 40-metre line. It doesn't actually need to touch the ground. Anyway, the referee said it's a penalty, and they've come up with the right result. Now the Knights are under pressure because, as you said, Al, they kicked it into touch, and they're well and truly down the other end of the field. Good exchange of passes back on the inside. This this is where you see Josh Ralph take control and he's commanding the ball. Now he gets it. Skimming across field and a flat pass to the big front rower in Max King, who's another beauty for the Titans. Plays it a metre out. Flat pass to Bernard. Can he get over the line? I think he might have. No. Good defence by the Knights. Take it straight out there. They've held him up. That's a huge effort by Knight, the Knights' defence. Yeah, and a big effort from that man too, Kurt Bernard. He thought he'd scored the try. He got up. But... It's play five here. What can they do here? Can they force a repeat? They've had to do so much defensive work. No video referee in the Holden Cup competition. Here's a little chip kick over Soper Lawler's head. It bounces back inside, and he had to have two goes at it because Mika almost got the football back. Smart kick, got a nice bounce. Soper Lawler did well in the end as well. And that's really hard to defend there. You can see Josh Rogers, he really takes the football right to the line. You don't know whether he's going to kick the football or not. Here, and he puts on. it on the toe just at stay the side. right at the death, right at the last minute there. It's, it takes amazing touch to be able to control it, but it's really hard to defend against. And that's a huge dropout with the aid of that breeze. Yeah, Nick Meany it was. He got good purchase on the football. Now the Knights driving the Titans backwards. Try inspire their teammates. It was Robson feeling in that one as well. He, Titans just struggling to, play, struggling to get back to his feet. Now he's got the football, the big front rower. So he's been busy, a flat pass on the edge. Good hands by the back rower there for the Titans, Sam Swift. And now we've seen another forward pass. It's that ill discipline once again. Is the breeze playing any sort of factor in these passing? In this passing? Well, I think it would play play a small factor in that though too. But they play flat. The halves play really flat. In particular, Josh Ralph, and you can see he's charging on the football, trying to get his team on the front foot, which is a great thing to do. But he's just overstepped the mark on that occasion. And Ethan Roberts, who's got his opportunity to start in the hooking position. A couple of those passes from dummy half. Just a little bit too much on them, too much out in front, but it's hard because your players are really charging onto the ball there too. Yeah, he certainly needs to be a bit, a bit quicker out of there, out of dummy half. I think Robertson needs to get the footy to his runner. Tell you what, Josh Ralph looks like a young Finch, whether it's Brett or Troy, his brother earlier. Troy would love to get a mention. Brett's the more famous one, of course, but he looks like a young Finch when he comes through at this age. Both Newcastle boys as well. Yeah, Val Valentine and Ellie Barner. Yeah, they came through. Let's hope he's got nowhere near as much lip as the Finch boys. Now the Knights shift the ball to the left-hand side. Newman steps back inside. Wishes he didn't. He got smashed by Bernard back on the inside. Now the Knights will need to go forward again. It's been all Titans. 10-4. The Knights would be reasonably happy considering it could have been a lot higher this year. The scoreboard. Here's a bomb and a good take on the edge there by Keel. Once again, need to work out how they're going to factor in this breeze and a relieving penalty again against the Knights. Yeah, this is the third time that it's happened to the Gold Coast Titans that, that they've been on their own try line there, doing it really tough. And then all of a sudden, the Newcastle Knights have come up with some ill discipline and give away this penalty. And, and they're, they're running into a big breeze. Um, and they're getting these relieving penalties. It is certainly hurting the Newcastle Knights' chances here. And you can see that run of penalties there yeah, to the Gold Coast Titans. Absolutely. Started all Knights and then it's been all Titans since. The referees had a busy day with plenty of penalties. Here's the Titans going forward. Look at Starling's energy that he's putting into defence. 
plays it smack in the centre of the halfway line. They go to the left-hand side. The combination with the two Joshes, particularly Ralph and Brimson, is the real attacking weapons for the Titans. Now they come back centre field. Titans on the fifth tackle. Thought he might have dropped that, then the lock forward. Oima on the field. Here's a bounce that favoured Josh Ralph. Johnny on the spot. He's got a double after a treble last week. I just thought of the play of the ball that he might have knocked the football on. So the Titans have chanced their hand once again and they've come up with the right result. Uh, he's a real footballer, isn't he? Just charging at the ball there. He just wants to be in and around. A great kick by AJ Brimson, showcasing his skills. The fullback there on the left boot, chips it back across. Josh Ralph charges at the footballer, bounces up nicely for him. But I think you can put that down to the penalty down the other end of the field. That ill discipline has really cost the Newcastle Knights. And it's some nice attacking pieces here that have got the points at the back end but some real ill discipline is really hurting the Knights cause. It's funny you speak about that because the Titans actually lead the competition off tries start restarting from penalties so they take the advantage that's an indication of a very good team looking back at that replay I think he just held onto the footy so it was the right decision by the referees and the Titans the little chip kick back into space and the honest push forward by Josh Ralph comes up with points. And now the other Josh, he'd be pretty pleased with the another relatively easy kick right in front. You can still see that breeze having a fact with the ball as it goes up onto the hill here at Hunter Stadium. The Titans have skipped away. 16-4, 14 to go in the first half. Yeah, and Coach Ben Wolf has made a couple of changes as well. Jordan Scott. Uh, who was named in the hooking position. He's put back to the bench. He's now come in and Ethan Robbins off as well. Mick Kurt Bernard has gone for his first spell on the sideline too. Short kick off again here. What you'd do you think, Frank? You'd imagine so. <laughs> Why not now? You've got to chase in some points. <laughs> They're going to do it. Absolutely. And he's got this one right too. Can Soper Lawley get up and... Oh, it's bounced into touch. That's a great result as well. Yeah, Christian Mika, he needed to have a play at the ball. I know that... Probably realise how close the sideline there was to him. He just got himself in a position to, to get his hands to the football, but I think he was just he just he just didn't really know what to do there, Christian Mika. He's got to be a relation to Con Mika. When you look at him, they look identical. Former Newcastle Knights player. Here's a chance, and it, once again we see the Knights set up. There's not a player in 40 metres down the short side all. So it's the scrum and then the winger is the first player you'll see and they're going to shift the ball. They're going to kick it from the restart. Oh, he shanked it. That looked like one of your golf shots, Al. It was probably a little straighter than mine, but you're right. They had the numbers on that out, outside there. They needed, you know, if they're going to come up with those plays, they've got to execute the kick there. That one, like you said, he shanked it off hit the outside of the boot there and they're continuing to chance their arm. Knights have got some fresh legs out there as well. Cameron King and Jermaine Tanoa Brown on the field. So both coaches using some interchange. Now we're seeing the Knights back under pressure again, and the Titans have had all the footy. Will they make the Knights pay once again? Down the short side, AJ Brimson, little kick back to the inside. Nick Meany, well positioned, come up with the football quite easily. Yeah, they still had a tackle up their sleeve as well, then the Gold Coast Titans, and they elected to kick and kick short there too. So I think if AJ Brimson had his time over again, he might want to run that football and set up a little bit better. A little error there on the on fifth play, but it just shows AJ Brimson. He traditionally does play in the halves. He, he's played all of his footy or most of his football in the halves in the younger grades. So. Uh, he's got amazing touch on the football as a fullback. And the Knights are trying to shift the ball to this left-hand side. Haven't used the breeze at all, but it's quite strong. And fifth tackle this time, they're in a difficult spot to kick from. Newman under pressure. That kick chase came through. Wonderful pick up on the fingertips there by AJ Brimson. And he'll pick the foot, he'll bring the footy back to the 40 metre line. With that strong breeze, the Knights haven't been able to use it at all in that set. It's one of the risks you take when you're running the football on play four and you get caught on a sideline there. The pressure that you put your halves under or the kickers that you put, the pressure you put your kickers under and they did that on that occasion. And it was a slow play, the ball as well. So nothing in favour of the Newcastle side. Henry Penn's first contact there on John Oliver will need to be better. 
because he's an experienced centre who's dangerous. And now the Titans, their centre field, 15 metres out on the attack, moving the ball quickly. Good interchange here between the big boys. Only the Knights defence had to aim up on that lead runner. Fifth tackle now, they're 10 metres out. Out of dummy half. Little kick in behind, a little bit too hard from Scott. It's his first real opportunity, Jordan Scott. Unfortunately, it's just a little too heavy. He's the nephew of Scotty Sattler, in actual fact. So, uh, yeah, some he, good bloodlines. Yeah, you're exactly right. He had the opportunity there. He did the right stuff. He got him on the front foot after that quick play the ball. I think you look back at the video and, and probably think, I need to take them on myself. There was there was enough space there, I think, to run the football. And he took the harder option in the kick, but didn't come off this time. But still some good signs out of dummy half for Jordan Scott. The Knights had loved to be the next to score before half time. Ten minutes to go in this first half. Oh, King got rocked by a good, solid contact there by the Titans. Sam Stone back on the inside from Mac Newman. McNamara on the bench today gives him another option in the half to bring on. Here's a quick play of the ball because the Titans left with no numbers and Starling makes them pay. Dangerous. Look at the footwork on the little fella. Just couldn't quite come up with a pass at the end of it. As soon as there's no markers or one marker, Tommy Starling's India. Now they go to the right-hand side. Cogger looking for space to get the ball to Henry Penn. Penn, a little kick. Come off the legs of Olive. It'll be knocked on well, on the far the side there by Kanoa Gudgeon. Just a little bit disjointed there, Al. Yeah, Tommy Starling, he set that up, didn't he? The great little dart out of dummy half there, some footwork, and like a little jack-in-the-box, isn't he? Every opportunity he gets, he tries to take them on, but... Once again, that execution just at the back end of the sets or on their big plays, they're, they're just lacking that polish there, whether it's been the crossfield kick or sometimes a short kickoff. So they're big, they're big moments or they're big plays that they want to keep coming up with, but just not coming off for them at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you hope, being a relatively little fella yourself who end up playing in the hooking position, you hope that Tommy Starling gets an opportunity to keep going forward despite his size because I just love what he does on the footy. He brings so much energy, doesn't he? He's probably about five seconds quicker over the 100 metres than me too, so he's got that up his sleeve. He's he's dynamic out of out of the hooking position. He's he's a real little guy. I think he was their most creative player last week up against the Penrith Panthers, and he's still only at high school too, so he's got plenty of time to, to develop. So hopefully some good signs ahead for him and the Newcastle Knights. And now the Titans shift the ball. Just got in front of their runner there, Sam Swift it was, who just got ahead of the ball player there. Couldn't quite link him, link up with him. Here's Brimson. Little chip kick once again. He skewed it back to the inside. Nick Meany. He'll eat them up all day. But he's knocked the football on. There's the commentator's curse. As soon as I said he'd eat them up. Uncharacteristic error there by Nick Meany. Yeah, there's been a couple of signs today that we we weren't expecting whatsoever after that big win over the Penrith Panthers last week the confidence that we thought they would have taken out of that it probably just hasn't been on display as much as we thought and some little costly errors and some ill discipline is hurting no surprise to see Josh Ralph in there as soon as he caught the foot he putting the pressure on speaking of pressure Corey Dennis up and in he knew that he had to shut the ball down he came in quickly to shut down AJ Brimson the Titans come through Sammy, who's surrounded by Knights players, eventually wrapped up 10 metres out. They'll go back to the centre and reset. And they do that through big Max King, also super impressive in 2016. He plays it a metre out. Titans on the attack. Flat pass that looked forward. Solid defence there by Zach Hoskins came down and also Jack Cogler and Tom Starling. Now they've got space to the left-hand side. Ball back inside. Oh, there's a big shot. King it was. Cameron King who put a shot back on the inside on AJ Brimson. Now the two Joshes combine and kick to the end goal. Knights have to knock it dead through Nick Meaney. Repeat set of six. Well, some good rugby league all round throwing the football from side to side. The Gold Coast Titans, some really strong defence from the Newcastle Knights. Oh, you're right with that forward pass there. I think you might have been watching Aaron Woods in the passing style there, the big front <laughs> rower in Nathan Watts there. It looked a little bit forward, but some really strong defence, but they forced a repeat set. So the back ends to the sets have been much better and it's been the difference between the two sides. Now the Titans have another opportunity. Nathan Watts, who is commanding a bit of attention through some NRL clubs, I'm led to believe. 
Play two, they're only 18 metres out. Good setup. They can go to the open side. Max King with the football. Barging his way downfield, backing his way down with Knights defenders all over him. He'll play at centre field, three metres out. Set up left and right. This time they come to the right. Rogers with the football, a short pass on the outside. Knights defence is equal to the task. They wrap up Sammy. Fifth tackle, they decide to run it. Ball bounced. Sam Swift's got the footy and Hosking did a wonderful job to jump on him straight away and wrap him up. And the Knights defence quickly onto that opportunity. You mentioned it before, often when you see the ball hit the ground, the defence relaxes and that's when it becomes dangerous. Good energy there and good awareness by the Knights. Yeah, I think they learned from their mistakes in that first first time when the ball hit the ground. This time there was no mistake whatsoever. They just kept charging at the football and he just couldn't get the ball away there, Sam Swift. And they'd be disappointed with that back end of the set there, the Gold Coast side. Knights have got about just under five minutes to see if they can do something about this 12-point deficit. Tanoa Brown dummying. Then he met with good defence. Noema was a big defender there. Short pass, little interchange. Back inside Domini from Cogger. Cogger trying hard. See if he can create a bit. He sees some numbers that are short in front of him. Goes to the line, an inside roll here. Starling's got it. Can they get the pass back? Look at Starling still scrapping. Good kick on the end of it. Here's the chance for Kanoa Gudgeon. One on one handed. Did he get the ball down? I think he did. Referee points to the spot. We talk about Tommy Starling and Jack Cogger. Cogger just challenging that tight spot back inside to Starling and he had plenty to do. Well, you spoke about it before, Frankie, that he was taking him on really squaring up the line. He did that exactly this time with a big right foot step and then with the offload away to the dynamite little hooker in Tommy Starling and he put the afterburners on, he took off, he spun out of a tackle, he summed it up beautifully and he puts the football on the toe there and kicks it away. Kanoa Gudgeon, he just needs to get downward pressure. He does that, he finishes it nicely. And they were searching for those points. It was, they were desperate for points just before half time and they've got them. It just keeps them alive in this game, right at the back, air, back end of this game. But some great work by their key playmakers. Tell you what, he had a lot to do still there. He did a wonderful job, Kanoa Gudgeon. Running at full pace, the ball bouncing back to the inside. It was a left-handed put down, one-handed. Really good. Fantastic effort. Wingers these days. Al, we, we've got a newfound respect for wingers, haven't you? We certainly do, yes. <laughs> they, they, uh, they're just amazing. And the amount of work that they do out of their own end, just carrying the football, uh, is, is remarkable what, what the wingers have to do now. You can see the breeze there with the referee shirt flapping in the breeze behind them. This will be a tough kick for Robson. He's going to have to start it in field and hopefully bend it back. And he's done exactly that. That's a brilliant kick. And a much needed one by the Newcastle Knights. Titans still leading 16 points to 10. With just on two minutes out till half time. They had to be the next to score the Knights. Yeah, you're right. And that was a great kick from the sideline. Braden Robson, I've seen a lot of his football playing in the centres, but he's made that transition into the lock forward position. He's a big body there with that great speed. He, he's been in some good form just of late too. This is his third year in the NYC, so he needs to take his game to that next level and continue his quest for an NRL spot. We've seen the Knights throw the football round. Plenty of times in their own end, and they look like they're set up to do the same again. Cogger getting his players to move off him, and he's happy to shift it quickly to King. In fact, I think he might have liked to do a second man to the short side to Newman, who's now parked himself on that short side, but they've gone to the open through Cogger. He's starting to get some authority out there now, Jack Cogger. Wonderful little player. He's going to be a beauty for the future of the Knights. Yeah, he's got the football dummy. Second man played a meanie. He's got space, and he's called it an obstruction. Unlucky there, the Knights. You can see there was definitely some sort of runner in the middle. And I, had, I would love to see Nick Meany be able to pin the ears back. Yeah, just going through there. Zach Hoskins, oh, he only just holds oh. him up ever so slightly. There's not too much in it. I've been quite interested to see that they've, they've continued to go to Jack Cogger on that right-hand side. You know, with that ability of Corey Dennis and Sopalora, his try-scoring ability on this left-hand side, they haven't really seen any football whatsoever. No, you're right. You're right on both fronts. I think that could have easily been played on. I think the pass at the back was on the other side of the lead runner from Hosking. 
In the meantime, the Titans are on the attack and they've got some footy in them. Here's a long pass to Sammy who stepped back inside. He'll be hard to stop from here, Sammy. Puts the head down. Good defence by the Knights. Starling and Tanoa Brown drag him down. Half a metre out. Oh, the dummy half's had a crack here, Scott. The Knights have done well in defence, but they've... <laughs> he went back to say he was held up. The referee said it's fourth. Now the Titans are a little bit lost in attack and Ralph had no options, so just succumbed to the tackle two metres out on the fifth. Brimson has the football. Dummy to run it. Come off legs and Knights. He might be offside there. Yep, I would imagine with 10 seconds to go, the only option is to take the two, but we are in Holden Cup. He has to take two, surely. But you're right, just he's unfortunate. Just in that offside position there, and almost just that natural reaction just to dive on the football. But the Gold Coast Titans, they built on a number of occasions. They're good defence by the Newcastle Knights, but they're playing flat and they're playing fast and they're playing to their edges. And, and to add to that as well, Jordan Scott's come on and he looks dangerous in around the dummy half position. AJ Brimson with that great kicking game that he does have. Just ball ricochets off and into that offside position. But if they can just take that eight-point lead into halftime, knowing that they're going to have the breeze at their back coming home in that second half, that'll be a huge advantage. Kicking at 70%. Jack Rogers, he's already two from three today. One of the more relatively... Well, it's not a straightforward kick. There's a fair bit of breeze to deal with. He's a quality kicker. We've seen the strength of that breeze when he tried to do the last conversion from the sideline. And he kicks the ball high, meaning it's a factor for him that's difficult. So Palola went to bring the ball in. But it goes dead. That'll be half time. Gold Coast Titans 16 lead the Newcastle Knights 10. They're facing a, a really tough breeze as well uh, for the Gold Coast Titans. They need to just continue on what they are doing, playing flat and fast at the line. Their big men are doing great work in around the middle, laying a great platform. Oh, we see the kickoff here, and it's a deep one. Oh, and it's knocked on by Jack Cogger. It would look like it was dangerous from the start. Big breeze at their back. Goal line dropout. Be a goal line dropout, the referee has said. He knocked it on in his end goal, and he's getting a bit of feedback here from some of the opposition. We've seen the Knights. They didn't use the breeze in the first half at all. Their short kickoffs, they paid dividends from the very first kickoff in the game. Ever since then, they didn't use it at all. Well, you think it would be a better tactic to do into the breeze in the second half there um, to hold it up a little bit, but you're, uh, you're right. They didn't use it as much. But anyway, the Gold Coast Titans, a fantastic uh, opportunity here in the opening moments of the second half. And now they get that opportunity. First play the ball will be only 22 metres out. We're seeing the debutante Thomas Moley in the, on the field. Brisbane North's junior making his debut. Here's a good run as well. Titans putting a real dip, and this time it's the lock forward. No, Ema. Oh, he might have dropped that footy. The referee said play on. Very lucky there. Titans just scheming across real through their halfback in Josh Ralph. You heard Alan Tung say 11 tries in the last eight games. He is a try scoring machine. Now they're trying to burrow their way in with the big forwards around the ruck. King will play it only about half a metre out. They're going to have another crack at it. Moley this time. And the referee, like he did in the first half, said obstruction. This time it's against the Titans. Yeah, well, it was his second touch there, Molly. Uh, as you spoke about, he's on debut, but just holding it back up on the inside. It was Sam Swift, the man, no the edge back rower there with his head bandaged, and the referee spotted that straight away. And well, that error there from Jack Cogger, uh, there's been relieved with that, a sigh of relief with that penalty coming to his side. And that was the right decision there by the referee, Phil Henderson. Spot on. Now the Knights, they've quickly got down over the way, over the halfway line, into this bruise. The kick was quite good. Once again, this time we see the Knights, it is, that get the penalty. We've seen those seven penalties in a row to the first three to the Knights, then seven to the Titans, and now, once again, the penalty relieves the pressure, and the Knights get an opportunity on the other end of the field. Yeah, too much in that tackle there from Noema, but I tell you what, I've been, been really impressed with his first up contact. Just too much in the tackle that occasion. Here's another penalty, this time hand on the football. You wonder how long they let this go for until they give someone a bit of a spell. The Knights want to get on with it, and they've got the ball. Robson with a bit of footwork back inside the debutant, and Moley, he's almost got to the line. He may even be held up. Well, I think his head's over the try line, but the football is just short. He plays it under the sticks. They go to the left-hand side. Tanoa Brown did well to catch the footy because he wasn't ready for it. 
spinning and pirouetting his way around. But he didn't go too far, and the Titans have wrapped him up half a metre out. Just dummying to play the football. Starling, clever, able to let a runner go through. Cogger wants his runners back on the inside. The Knights very disjointed in attack. You can see he's frustrated there too, Jack Cogger. Now they go forward through Tanoa Brown. Little exchange of passes to King, who presented the football. Instead, he backed himself. He might have come up with a try. Referee's going to look at it. No video ref to go to, and he points to the spot, Phil Henderson, and says, that's a try to King. Wonderful determination. Yeah, great work after that error from the kickoff there from Jack Cogger. It's turned it around. They've got down this other end of the field some strong carries there. And Cameron King, the nice interchange of passes from Jermaine Tanoa Brown there, got the football on there, King. His defence was outstanding in that first 40 minutes. He had plenty of work to do. He spun out of the tackle there of Josh Rogers. Plenty of attention coming across. AJ Brimson involved there, but the two big men and some nice skills shown as well from the big front rowers in the interchange of passing. But it's his first try, his first try this season in his career, so he'll be happy with that. Oh, good on you, Cameron King. Nothing more enjoyable than you can see a little smile coming on the face. These Knights front rowers don't mind a try. Amy and Butterfield, they've got a few throughout the year. Butterfield, six tries so far this season, so you're right. And just that ball movement really, really caught the... Gold Coast Titans off guard there and got a one-on-one -on -one play up against Rogers there and I did enough Cameron King to spin out of it and, and use his determination to get that football down. Despite being fairly close this is a difficult kick for Robson nailed a beauty in the first half from the sideline with plenty of breeze to speak about this time you'll need to hit it a lot flatter there you go he's tried to just Thread the needle there inside the post, and unfortunately for him, he's hit the post, meaning that it'll remain 16-14. Knights' first point scorers in the second half. Didn't know who I was calling with there, whether it was Daryl Halligan, the kicking coach, or the Frankie <laughs> Barrett there. It's great. Well, you got it all worked out here, but you're right, the breeze is really tough to handle, and, he, and sometimes it's when you probably don't strike the ball as hard as you like, sometimes it doesn't go as well as it could have in that occasion. But that breeze is really causing havoc here. This time, Cogger takes it, no problems. Once again, they're happy to spread the ball very quickly right across the try line. And King, the try scorer, he's got some wind under the sails now. Let me assure you, with the goal kicking department, Chook's very safe. I'm more like Kenny Kickchase, the bloke who catches the footy and kicks them back to people at training. He wasn't given a kicking license. Now here the Knights go through Sam Stone, spinning his way downfield. He's going to be a wonderful footballer, Sam Stone. Going to grow into that big long body of his. Here's Cogger at the line once again, showing inside, short ball on the outside. Brave line run by Robson. And the Knights get to the halfway line. Cogger once again trying to square it up. This time Meany on that inside shoulder. He's keeping the defence a little bit more honest. He's been busy, Cogger. In a better position to make that kick on the fifth. And Keel had to just do the fingertip juggle a little bit. Kick chase quite good. That's a better constructed set of six by the Knights. Well, it's more traditional set. Yeah. We just haven't seen it from the Newcastle side in the last couple of weeks. But it's the right thing to do to get through, you know, get some good go forward and, and get to the end of your sets and put a good kick and kick chase on the back of it. It's the right way to play, I think, but they're living by the sword at the moment. Remembering they passed four times across their try line to start it. So there, you're right though, that's that's that balance they've got to get. Love to see some more ball out to Corey Dennis. You mentioned it in the first half. And now the Titans, it is off their own end. Big strong breeze at their back. They lead by two points. Rip a game here in the Holden Cup. Fifth, fifth tackle now. AJ Brimson, he's taken on the kicking duties on the fifth. And a lot of little chip kicking. This time he's kicked for space and it's bounced and Henry Penn is under pressure. Did very well. Calm and controlled. That's the right, that's the right execution to get the ball up in the air. It was, it was more of a punt style kick, but if they can get a torpedo bomb with this breeze at their back and swirling in the air too, that'll be really tough at the back. And you can see, even just with that traditional kick there, really struggled at the back there, Meany. Looking forward to seeing what, speaking of punt kicking, what Jared Hayne might produce today with that big booming bomb of his. As the Hayne plan arrives in the Hunter here at Hunter Stadium later on today. Here's Super Lawler. It's again limited opportunities with the footy. Bounced up. Could have easily been penalised here, the Titans. 
And they said he was trying to milk it. Fair enough. Starling had a dummy half with some space. Down the short side. Cogger inside, outside. Beautiful ball to Corey Dennis. Back inside, back outside once again to Sam Stone. That is fantastic football by the Newcastle Knights. Well, some real razzle-dazzle down that left-hand side. We spoke about we want to see the football in Corey Dennis's hand. Tommy Starling, he started it all off, though, in and around that ruck. He some eyes up and played what was in front of him. He saw a man down. He took off. Jack Cogger, he had plenty of work to do on the outside. It was great work drawing in Christian Mika. Got the ball on the Corey Dennis. Some interchange of Parsons. Robson in there as well. A big Sam Stone, he finished it off. Great football. Do or die rugby league from the Newcastle Knights, and they're coming up trumps at the moment. Some real question mark over the cogged Corey Dennis pass, and you can hear in the sound effect microphones the Titans players screaming out that it was forward. I think the Titans players might be right. In the end, wonderful work there. Good composure by Robson. As you said, third year of Holden Cup. Just summed it up beautifully. Took his time back inside, back outside, and Sam Stone, he's always honest, pushing up on the football, and a worthy result is a try for him. Now the Knights back in front, or in front, in front for the first time today. It's quite amazing after the kickoff that Jack Cogger dropped there, and then all of a sudden we thought, well, the Gold Coast Titans are going to run away with this, and they've hit back quite quickly. Cameron King, the opening try there of that second half, and now Sam Stone. Well, I agree with you too. He looks like he's got some real potential there and, and still plenty of growing left to do as well for that young man. Here's another opportunity for Robson. He needs to start it inside that post. He's done a wonderful job. He's bent it back into the breeze. You could see him through a little bit of grass up to see what that breeze was doing. I was concerned that he'd started it too far to the right, but he bent it in. Look at the crowd enjoying the sunshine here in Newcastle. They're loyal, 13,500 last week still turned up. Wonderful to see him out here early supporting the Newcastle Knights as we're seeing some um, interchange here, some fresh legs going on the field in Heath Gibbs. It'll be interesting to see where they play him. He might play on the back row today. Yeah, we saw him come on last week with the inclusion of Dennis and Penn coming in. He went back to the, the bench last week. Usually plays in the centre position, but he filled in on that edge. What a great run by Jermaine Tremont. To Noah Brown here, spinning out of the first tackle. Now the Knights really got a bit of momentum going, and it's the Titans that are under a bit of pressure. King will play it. 35 metres out. Hosking's been wonderful for the Knights. Getting better each week, Zach Hosking. There's Starling, all the creativity on to King. Since he scored the try, he's got it all going on now, King. Now Cogger, once again, showing inside, going to the outside, starting to set it up nicely. Gibbs it is, it'll play the football on the fifth. Down the short side, Cogger. Beautiful ball to Henry Penn. Can he link up with his winger? He can't yet. Now he does. Oh, great kick by Kanoa Gudgeon. Into the in goal, and he'll bounce him back into the in goal. Kanoa Gudgeon. Fantastic work there. Great set of six after points, wasn't it, from the Newcastle side? But they're really getting some momentum through the middle of the ruck now. This wasn't happening in the first half. They played too lateral and didn't earn the right to shift the football. They're really going forward well now. And you're right, Kanoa Gudgeon, he had plenty of work to do. AJ Brimson, he found the ground as early as he could, but just couldn't get the football back into play. And another set of six they've got to defend now on their own line, the Titans. Titans are going for a short kickoff with a big breeze at their back. It must be contagious. Chancing your arm out. <laughs> Amazing, wasn't it? There was a half opportunity, though. They just, the execution once again has let them down. Josh Ralph was right on the mark, but you play the percentages and launch it long. Oh, I love the Holden Cup. The Noah's Ark. There's two of everything. Now the Knights are on the attack. Zach Hosking dummies to one side, and he's held up there in. Solid defence, and they did a good job to slow him down eventually. Now the Knights, King turns the ball back in. Here's Stone, wanted to short run on the outside. Spins and goes himself. And eventually Sam Stone is dragged down a metre out. Knights in good field position. Newman got the ball onto King. Can he get a double? Flicked it out to Hosking, and in the end, great defence by the Titans. Desperate try-saving defence. Sam Swift is the man that try-saving tackle. Fifth tackle under the post. The Knights looking for a Pete set of six. Cogger knocked down by the Titans. Six to go. And Henry Penn has the football. More pressure on the Titans line. Wait, wait. Go one. 
to Noah Brown will go centre field. Hosking there, pushing up, looking for some football. Starling and Newman looking to combine here with Cogger on the other side of the ruck. Here's Hosking, the man that scheming everywhere. He's got very close and unfortunately held up. I thought he might have lost the football. Really starting to understand this game, Zach Hosking. He's, he's, he's going to have the toughness of his old man, the mule, David Hosking, but also a little bit more leg speed. Yeah, great work once again, though, by AJ Brimson and Sam Swift in there. Some desperation in their defence. Now the Knights, they go to the left-hand side through Newman. Runners inside and out. They got a big setup to the right-hand side. Starling, got away to King. King done a good job under pressure. Once again, trying to back his way to the try line. He'll play it standing up. Meany wants the football. Quickly on to Cogger. Cogger wants to run it. Dummies in the inside. Kick him behind. They said not played it. Ball out to now. Kanawa gudgeon to the sideline. Can he get there? Just goes into touch. The sideline and the try line were the factors he had to deal with. And they put him into touch. I thought he might have been a little bit too deep to be able to get there. Yeah, Kanoa Gudgeon, he had plenty of work to do. He's taken out the corner play. Stand the cameraman there too, I think, on his <laughs> way through. He's got the hand out there, the football, just that right foot. You can just see it just goes into touch there ever so close. Oh, well, now the Titans have turned the football over. That was inch close. Just put his foot on the line, otherwise it would have been a marvellous try. Unfortunately for the Titans, Christian Mika has turned the, turned the footy over. Once again, it's the Knights putting on the pressure to the Titans' defensive line. And you can see the energy in the side at the moment as we have another look at Kanoa Gudgeon going for the line. Ooh. There's only about a centimetre in that. Arms around, boys. <laughs> the commitment by the cameraman. He was happy to stay there right till the death. He's taken one on the on, loaf of bread. He's caught one in the head with the camera, but there, commitment by our cameraman. Fantastic. Hold, hold, hold. Whatever it takes to bring you the pictures on Fox Sports. Here's Meany away to Dennis. They've got to get some more footy out to Corey Dennis. He'll be a handful. And this bloke also, Sopa Lola, scheming. Can find the try line. Good field position for the Knights now. There's plenty of finger pointing. There's traffic cops everywhere. The ball gone back was mean. He's picked it up on the bounce. He's dangerous in this broken field play. Good defence there by the Titans. This is Tommy Starling back to Cogger. Short pass to Hosking. Promotes the footy for King. He'll get a double, the big boy. Wonderful football there by Hosking. The interchange to passes to King. Got his first, now he's got a double on the same day. Well, he can't believe it, can he? And what a great pass there by Hosking. He had heaps of work to do. Cogger here plays a short ball, gets the arm free, and beat Cameron King. His second career try and second today. Quite amazing, but it's all the momentum is a Newcastle Knights favourite at the moment. A big error there from the Titans when they finally got the football. But you can see they're jumping, they're happy and a double to Cameron King. And we spoke about this ladder around the eight. I mean, it's the Knights need to win every game to be a chance to do it. And if they can win today, they'll jump the Brisbane Broncos. So it's a vitally important one. And look at Cameron King. He's, he's joining these front rowers in the try scoring department and loving it. And you look at the Newcastle Knights, they're a couple of weeks ahead as well. They play South at home here again next week. Uh, so that's that's a huge advantage. And then the Dragons, in, in fine form, they play them away in round 26. That'll be a really big challenge for them. But they need to focus, obviously, just on the here and now at the moment. But just having a look at their run home for the Gold Coast Titans in that same boat. They play the Panthers at home next week. No doubt looking to bounce back as the try is converted before the Cowboys away. So a couple of tough road trips for the Gold Coast Titans. Absolutely it is, and in both the NRL and in the Holden Cup competition, Newman adds the extra points. Well, these games spin and change complexity very quickly. All of a sudden, we're seeing the Knights that have kicked clear. It's quite amazing. It's a side that's actually running into the breeze. We thought that with that half-time lead to the Gold Coast Titans, with the aid of this breeze at the second half, they would just really control the football and run away with this, but it's... It's been quite the opposite. Here's Butterfield back on the field. <laughs> look at this bloke. He did look like his uncle Tony then kicking off the, the signs at the back of the field. Knights will be looking to complete this set of six and the Titans 
Be keen to get down the other end of the field. They've had very little field position with the football in hand. Here's Hosking. Once again playing the ball just short of the 40 metre line. It's working the other end, Tommy Starling. Second half possession, have a look at the Newcastle Knights, 79% to 21. So much football there, and it's, and it's really hurt the energy levels of the Gold Coast Titans. I don't think it'll be too long before we see a couple of changes, and maybe even Kurt Bernard back into the action here because they've just got such a great roll on through the middle at the moment in Newcastle Knights. All the energy, all the momentum, and all the points coming their way. Yeah, fantastic to see their more conventional set of six. Just to see Jack Cogger getting in, taking control. Interesting, you know, he, there's a lot of talk that Jared Mullen will be out of today's game, but Will Pearson will be going up instead of Jack Cogger pushing through. So they, they want him to play in this grade with his teammates and, and you know, do his trade. Which is good and decision. I, and I think he's had a, f a few tough losses there. So to be able to come back and maybe get a couple of wins under his belt and, and build that confidence back up to him, such a young guy, you don't want to burn him too early. Here's a chip kick over the top of it. Look at Tommy Starling. He could have easily just bundied off then, decided that he'd make the effort, turn around and bring the football back. We've waxed lyrical about him, but why wouldn't we? He's a little ripper. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's been in absolutely everything. And it hasn't just been his attacking game. It's been the little little areas of the game. The little one percenters exactly like that, which have been so impressive. The, the cleaning up with the loose kick there, all those try-saving tackles and, and the chasing at the death. Uh, really, really good to see. Yeah, a good footy on the edge here as well. Sam Stone showing a bit of ball work. And... Here's some play to the edge and some space for the Knights. Newman's backed himself. He got to the outside of Oliver, who chased and eventually wrapped up the 5'8". Now Cogger at the line, dumbing inside and outside. He'd like his time again, I think, but they've got away with it. Mr. Consistency, Tommy Starling's there. This time he's put it on a dime. Beautiful kick to the sideline. We've seen his kicking skills in the first half to Kanoa Gudgeon who created a try. But he's just got some real football smarts about him. He knows what to do in, in the right moments. Henry Penn's in all sorts of trouble here. At the moment he looks like he's doing a yoga move in the background, but I don't know if he's cramped or if he's had a head knock. Or, no, I think he's had a head knock, unfortunately. Could be a bit of both, but it certainly needed some trainer. And trainer probably needs to get to the referee and stop the game when he can. There's a penalty here for milking for the Titans, which might give them an opportunity to... He's going to come to the sideline, Henry Penn. He was... Look like he's in a wait, fair wait, amount behind. of distress behind. there, Al. Yeah, and I'm just having a look too because I can't. I think it looks like a lower leg injury, but you're right. The way he, he almost looked dazed when he got up from the field there, but he looks like he's in some real, real problems there with the lower leg injury there. So that'll be a concern for the Newcastle side. There's going to be a shuffling of places around. They have got that luxury of Heath Gibbs, who yes. he's actually, you know, played a lot of his football in the centres there, so he can shift out wide. Here go the Titans through their 5'8 in Rodgers. He needs to come into this game. Lost it. Referee saying he tried to go forward. He was a bit of acrobatics there as well. It could be just severe cramp for Henry Penn. I tell you what, it was nasty cramp. It looked like his legs had been broken there on stage. But Rodgers has come up with a mistake and just again relieving the pressure on the Knights. Yeah, it's a, it's a really, really crucial error there from Josh Rogers. Let's go ahead, Just getting back into this game. There's still plenty of time and they're only 10 points behind as we get some vision of Henry Penn still having some troubles in your right. It, it just looks like it is cramps. He's having some problems with a one-on-one -on -one strip oh, here. It's called play on it. The Knights have turned it over. Mika's got the football. He'll be able to stop. In fact, they can't stop him. It's a... Game of opportunity at the moment. The Knights turned it over through Corey Dennis. Sopa Lula couldn't pick it up. Mika picked the football up and away he went. Big and strong with a fend. Was from the scrum. Good hustle there by Josh Rogers who then picked the footy up. Got a one-handed away. And Christian Mika backed himself and scores in the corner. Yeah, I've got some real question marks on the Josh Rogers strip here. Whether it's, it's come forward off him or not the referees play play on call play on so we can't go back there's no problems here but we'll just have another look you see josh rogers when the ball comes free spot on yep i think it's a knock on they've given it away tommy starling in there once again but christian mika the big don't argue there puts it out and gets the ball down in the corner 
Yeah, you're spot on, Al. I think they might. Just be keeping it entertaining for us. That's what we think might happen. Still plenty of time to go, 17 and a half minutes. This is a crucial kick for Josh Rogers. We've seen Braden Robson nail one in the first half from out here. There's lots of factors to deal with. Danny Baderas on the hill there. Look at him enjoying the sunshine. Bright socks on too. Look at these young ones there. The big Mark Hughes ball last night. The big the black tie ball. His beautiful wife, Chris, is one of the key organisers of that. Dan might need a little bit of sunshine just to dry himself out a bit today. I'm sure he was responsible. Well done to the Mark Hughes Foundation. Here's a big kick for Josh Rogers. Right on the sideline. Hit it well. The breeze is going to be a factor and, and will push the ball just to the other side of the post and it'll remain a six-point gap. The Knights, 26 over the Titans, 20. Yeah, an opportunistic play there. We think it was a knock-on, but they score in the corner. You can hear the thump on that football, Ooh. how well he strikes the ball out wide there, but with that huge breeze. Now, here we go. Short kickoff. Surely not. Surely Drive not. Drive it long, but here we go. Well, it's a, it's a three-quarter kickoff. And a chance, I think, Mick has knocked the footy on as well. Oh, that's a big call once again. I thought it might have gone through the net and knocked on there. It was just a little too long to be a short kickoff, but it was a very short, long kickoff. <laughs> Here's the Titans now. Here's some space for AJ Brimson. He gets the wall ball away to Olive. He's tackled by Gibbs, who has moved to the centres. That severe cramp for Henry Penn, taking him from the field. Sam Swift now with the football. Two Sam, Sam Stone and Sam Swift. This time it's Swift for the Titans. Farafahi with the football. Dummying. Simeone will play at 22 metres out, fifth tackle. You would think they go to the air to put some pressure on here. Little chip kick to space. Meaty had to get on his bike, did a wonderful job. Used that speed to get there, take the ball on the full and put his body on the line. Yeah, you're right. I thought they might have went to the air to put a contest on the, on the back of it, but they're happy to play the percentages there and, and put the pressure on the Newcastle side. They just don't want to give away a penalty here, the Titans. They want to maintain this momentum that they've just finally got. The pendulum continues to swing either side, and one of the key factors, well, the key factor, has been the penalties throughout the game. And both sides have been critical of it. The Newcastle side, they did this in the first half. Coming out of their own end, the Titans, they gave them away some really cheap penalties and some piggybacks down the field. And, and now the Titans are returning favour and doing that in the second half to the Newcastle side. Corey Dennis leading, but he actually lost the football. And I think this time Rogers gave it back to him. He knew he would have been penalised. So. Smart play there by the 5 -8. Now Sam Stone with the footy. Son of Rick Stone plays at 38 metres out. Look at Starling putting pressure on. In the end, they didn't fall for the dummy and a good tackle by the big front rower in Nathan Watts. Cogger, second man play to Meany. Beats that first tackle more often than not. And plays at 25 metres out. Butterfield going forward for the Knights. Good charge by the big front rower on the fifth. Giving the Knights the perfect setup play for a fifth tackle kick option. Cogger goes to the line. Probably just went too far in the end. Run out of space and had to kick it straight to AJ Brimson. Yeah, he took the football right to the line, tried to sum up his options, but Brimson, once again, his positional play at the back has been fantastic. You're the big boy you thought that the Titans would need to put back in very shortly, and Bernard is back on the field. Must admit, he only ambled out there. He'll need a little bit more energy, but he's about to get his first touch as the Titans are 35 metres out. Here he is. It's a good charge. It's a good time to bring him on by Ben Wolfe. Now the Titans on the back of that have got some go for it. Sam Swift up into the line. Had some numbers on the outside. If he could have just looked up, he attracted the winger in. Kanawa Gudgeon, fifth tackle. Brimson moves the ball to Rogers. Rogers. Puts it up in the sunshine and the big breeze. Look at the breeze take it. Meany did a wonderful job to get back almost into the in goal. And now he hooks up with Matt Sopalola. He'll be able to stop here, Matt Sopalola. He's a try scoring machine. One on one with Brimson over the halfway, over the 40. And a great tackle by Brimson brings him down. The Knights have got big numbers to the right because the Titans haven't yet got back on side. Tom Starling got the ball. Moves it quickly to this outside. Oh, husking the ball slightly behind him. And it's a penalty because the Titans never got back on side. Yeah, and Sam Swift in particular 
He's way out of breath at the moment. The Newcastle Knights are trying to play some up tempo football now. If Cogger, he's not allowed to take that fast. What are you doing? Tap there. If he could have right. taken that tap, Titans hadn't got their back, composure back together at all. In fact, it looks like the Knights are coming home harder than the Titans. They look a bit busted. A little bit tired at the back end of this game. Starling with a flat pass on the outside to Robson, who thought of doing the little flick pass. Third year in the Holden Cup Release experience. Said, put it under your jumper. A couple of metres out now. Newman, who's been good for the Knights. He's just given them some good direction. Showed him back to the inside. And Nick plays it a metre out. Cogger will want the football. He gets a dummy from Starling. He was screaming for it, but Starling happy to go forward and play. Next to the right and upright, five metres out. This will be a penalty. You take the two when you lead by six. Hang on, you might get some time in the bin here. Eventually, Bernard it was. I think he might have given a little bit of feedback. Still coming. Well, let's listen in here and see what... It looks like he's walking. He's all over him. The ball comes out. That's what the penalty's for. And then he's given me a spray. That's why he's in the bin. We've had the meeting. We're going. What are you doing, Wayne? Tapping it? I explained oh. it, Josh. He's off. They're going to have a shot, Phil. Well, there you heard it all yeah. through our sound effects, Mike's there. Obviously, a bit of frustration there from big Kurt Bernard. Penalised for being offside and then a little bit of feedback for the ref didn't help. Yeah, and that's going to really hurt yep. his side here down to 12 men. And as you spoke about, the Newcastle Knights are really coming home. Got some great energy at the moment. They're going to do it really, really tough here. and They're going to try and extend this to an eight-point lead. So they're going to have to score two tries to win this game. And Kurt Bernard, he only just got back on the field as well. The big junior Kiwi. And he'd had a couple of good runs. Some new discipline there has, has really hurt him and hurt his side. Just taking him into the dressing sheds. He obviously yep. can't stay on the sideline. Bobby Lanahan, the ground manager, is onto it. Part of the learning curve for these young blokes. Robson now with a relatively easy kick. Oh, mocker. <laughs> the commentator's curse. That that upright hasn't been good to him at all, and now what's happened? They've no knocked on by the Titans. Seriously, this commentator's curse thing is amazing. Like, <laughs> well, if you actually look at the the goalposts, they're still actually swaying a fair bit in the breeze and moving about. It's quite you know, the wind that's going on here at the moment is playing all sorts of havoc, in particular with the goal kickers. I think it's a full moon at the moment as well, Al. That could be a factor as well. And, you know what full moons and breezes do? They send people a bit mad. Braden Robson, Wait, Jack, Jack, Jack. key opportunity there. But the Knights have had a bit of luck once again because they've got the football back and they'll get a set of six. I'm sure a try would be much more, much better than the two points, but it looked like it was a gift. Which goes to show it's never a gift in the Holden Cup. Newman now moves the ball quickly to Meany. Meany on the outside to Corey Dennis. Big and strong. Well, he gets there. Good defence by Sammy drags him down. Super Lawler backing himself, but he'll come up with a try. He loves the try line. He's certainly a try scoring sneak. Matthew Super Lawler. You would imagine that is the blow the Knights needed to come up with. Good dint put in them by Corey Dennis and then. Pretty poor defence by the Titans. Well, he scored a hat-trick in round one against them. He's got plenty of confidence up against the Gold Coast Titans. And he showcases that there. Some poor defensive work there from the, the Titans in and around the marker play there. They should have been switched on, especially with this guy who's a noted try scorer. He picked it up. He scooted away. That's 15 tries for the season. He was a leading try scorer in the local competition here last year. And he backs that up. On the outside there, great combination with Corey Dennis. This time he does it all on his own. Spent a bit of time in the Intra Super Premiership as well, which I think he might have scored a few tries up there as well. So, yeah, it's just starting to really understand this craft. I don't know even if I should mention this kick for Braden Robson. If I say he's no chance, he'll probably drill it. He's throwing the grass up in the air to work out what factor the breeze is playing. Often look too far into the breeze. First half we thought Knights didn't use it enough. And Titans look good. Second half it's been the reversal. Neither team has used the advantage of the breeze. Braden Robson has the ball placed.
pulls it to the left hand side meaning that there's still a chance for the titans there they can get two converted tries they can come up with a victory the first thing they need to do is get the ball down the other end and defend and defend that end and come up with some good field position yeah there's that or they go for the short kickoff oh, they, yes. play, they play the newcastle knights theory here and try and get that football back so we'll just see i think you're onto something here al the crystal ball's out has he got it to go 10? It's going to be a beautiful kick. The Knights have done very well in Heath Gibbs has come down with it. Titans probably needed to compete in the air a little bit there, though. They're, they had an opportunity. The kick was absolutely spot on there. It actually used the breeze to, to get it to that 10-metre mark that they needed to get to, but nobody just attacked the football. Remembering the Titans are down to 12 men, just to make it a little bit more difficult. With big Kurt Bernard. Sure, how much time be left on the clock by the time his turns up? He might have, he might be in the early shower already. Well, the night's 42 metres out. They lead by 10 points. Just on seven minutes to go. There's that inside pass. This time it's the big front rower that gets it. Butterfield from Cogger, who backs up now and goes to the line, drills it into touch. Good controlled finish to that set of six by Jack Cogger. Yeah, well, you think that the Titans are only probably going to have maybe three sets of six if they're, if they're fortunate enough here to score the tries, and they're going to have to score in, in two of those sets. So really important work here by Cogger to slow the clock down, really, to, you know, use that to their advantage and put the pressure on the opposition, not only on the scoreboard, but also with the timekeeper as well. Do you have a crack at a 40-20 with this breeze of your back up? Oh, look, I don't think they will. I think they'll keep trying to throw the football around and, and, and some second-phase play, I think, will, or what they do. They, they won't die wondering. Out, out. Both their centres got a double last week, and also their halfback, Josh Ralph, who scored those 11 tries in eight games, including a treble last week and two this week. You've got to get the hand, ball in, the, in their hands. Here's a good run by Mika. Bounces out of the Butterfield tackle and keeps it going downfield. Eventually, he's dragged down by three Knights defenders. Now they go centre field. Brimson trying to get his hands on the footy and create something. Needs to get to the edges, the Titans. Now they're going down the middle. Braden Robson called out there. Did really well in the end. Good refereeing as well to call him out. Now there's one marker so the Titans can get up in behind the tight spot for the Knights. They'll need to come up with a footy if they can. They'll bomb it if you would think. And here's the bomb while he's scared and it's more of a be a 54 degree wedge in the end he didn't quite get a hold of that and this time the Knights once again Kanoa Gudgeon put his body on the line got up carried the foot here's a good carry from Heath Gibbs in one side out the other over the halfway line dummying to no one in the end he's spinning around like he's in a phone booth Knights have put some pressure on they want to go to the left hand side Newman onto Cogger good ball to Corey Dennis he nearly caught linked up again with Cogger who's parked himself on the short side meaning Cogger will step back inside. This time he's linked up with Corey Dennis. Away, 17. Here we are. Get square, 17. Dennis plays at 15 metres out. Knights are attacking the Titans line through stone. This will be the killer blow if they come up with a try here. Cogger wants it and gets it. Little kick in behind. Great field positioning there by AJ Brimson. Now the counter attack. Rogers. That was brilliant by AJ. Brimson and, and now John Olive trying to create something. They need him to come into the game. Yeah, his positional play has been fantastic. Brimson, he attacked the football and took off and all of a sudden give him a glimmer of hope here. You can see they're just down on energy because the Newcastle Knights have had so much possession in this second half. They've got to find something. Somebody's got to step up. Brimson's done some great work. Ralph or Rogers, who's this going to be some second phase helps? Brimson and is the man. Off the, ball. the youngster is still only 17. He looks like he puts on weight every couple of weeks. He's going to be a hell of a player. Out of dummy half now. Jordan Scott might be the one who can create it. We've seen last in, in recent times. He's come up with tries. Try a couple of weeks ago to win it for the Titans. Here's some space. Brimson with a beautiful ball on the outside. It was knocked down by the Knights. When I say beautiful ball, it was in the right space. Olive was tempted to pick it up on the bounce. Yeah, they want to race to pack their scrum here, the Gold Coast side as well. It was. He summed it up beautifully, Brimson. The ball just gets touched there at the back end and goes to the ground. And you're right, I thought John Olive, he might have had a crack at picking that up. He lets it go over. They've stopped the clock here now. The Titans, their seasons, it's on a nice edge. 
It sure is. With, and Kurt Bernard's got about just under two minutes to go in the sin bin, so he'll get back out there for the last 90 seconds. Can they have a late rally, the Titans? Short pass on the outside. Good defence by the Knights. Sam Stone made sure that lead runner in Brett Stratton was knocked over. Knights concede a penalty. It's been a consistent theme throughout the day, the penalties. That's now 10-9. The Knights just in front on the penalty count. Here's the Titans trying to attack in behind the ruck. I think they'll hold him up in the in-goal, which is probably the worst-case result for the Titans. Nathan Watts it is who plays it. Don't play it yet, you wait. Wait Time's for off. him. Time's off. They're set up on both sides. A little short side set up as well, but they're going to come to the open. Max King's got the footy. Good offload. Here's some space and danger. But the Titans, good defence by the Knights. Wrap him up through Braden Robson. Set up deep on the left-hand side. Here's a chance. The ball out now. Can they get over the try line? The Titans, they have done. I think it's Fred Keel who's got himself into the try line. Over the try line, I should say, and into the end goal. There is where there's still a chance. The Titans are always going to fight for every inch. Well, there's a pulse at the moment in, it. in the Gold Coast Titans season at the moment. It's only faint, but it is there, and a big kick from the sideline. But Fred Keel, he goes over right on the edge there. Some good second phase by Ethan Roberts, but a huge kick out wide. Rushing this kick, he knows there's no time left, Josh Rogers. Under two minutes, they're about to get their full complement. They did well to score with 12 men as well. He needed to start it to the right-hand side. In fact, he does the opposite, and it bends back into the breeze. Now, I'm taking my goal-kicking licence back again. I'm handing it back in, Alan Tung. The best they can come up with is a result of a draw is the best result they can come up with. As we look at this replay here, good strength shown there by Ethan Roberts to get the football over the top. Hosking was dirty with himself. He got there, come up with a contact, but he was big and strong, the winger in Keel. Yeah, great work. Time Ethan it. Roberts had plenty of work to do to keep that ball free, and here we go. Short, no short kick-off now. What do you reckon, Al? Surely <laughs> sure. it's not a short kick-off, is it? No way. Surely not. They'll kick it long and Onside. try and defend the last moments of this game. Nick Meany had to go and Google that to find out what it was, a long oh. kick-off. He's done well, though. He's bets it into touch. Maybe that's something that could have been tried earlier. Oh, this Holden Cup, it seriously can produce all sorts of football. Wonderful kick by Nick Meany into a strong breeze. He bent it like Murley Duran. It went sideways and bounced into touch for the Knights. Uh, well, we could see a win against the feet in the scrum here. Who knows? Anything could happen here, but they kick long and they get a result from it. Only 40 seconds left. There's disappointment there. Can they come up with another try, the Knights? I'm sure Matty Soper Lawler would like another one. But he's 15th for the year. They might go the short side to Corey Dennis. They thought about it. Here's Soper Lawler with the football. Comes up with the offload. Jack Cogger will be able to stop from there, and he scores. Knocked backwards by Matt Soper Lawler. And a fitting reward after a very busy, well orchestrated win by the Newcastle Knights on the back of this man, Jack Cogger. Yeah, he's been great. And also Tommy Starling, their little combination in and around the middle. And, and you're right, there was a there was a Titans hand coming around the football there. Referees called play on. Jack Cogger, he does a rest. He's right on the mark there. It's been a good battle between the halves. Josh Rogers and Ralph up against Cogger and Nick Newman. He's been good as well in the 5-8 position for the Knights. And they've done enough to hold on and, and win. The other thing we've actually worked out is Jack Cogger is the skipper today. We have a bit of trouble working that one out. And the big front rower in the skipper and Tyrone, well, he's also part skipper, we think. Tyrone Amy is out of the extra two points. That's full time here in the Holden Cup. The Newcastle Knights, 36, have defeated the Titans, 24.